Praise the Lord, everyone. If we could all stand. In Jeremiah, verse 20, or, oh my gosh, chapter 20, verse 13 says, Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for ye hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of the evildoers. The world we live in, and I, I feel like I say this every Wednesday and every time I'm up here, but the world we live in is not the world that, you know, Pastor grew up in. You know, the kids that we have, they don't, they don't go through the same, same things. You go out to the store and you hear things that parents say in front of their kids. And, you know, I never thought anything about it until I had a kid. And I go, oh, my gosh, I would never imagine to say something like that in front of my kid, however old they are. But we, these kids and these parents and all these people, you know, we, we come here and we praise God. We know he loves us. We know he touches us. And we know that he protects us. But they don't. You know, some they believe. and They believe in Jesus. They believe in all this. But do, do they really know what he can do? So if we could just pray for the world today to show them what he can do and give him some praise. My God is awesome. He can move the mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I am weakened, forever He will reign.
surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace.
Thank you, Jesus. Let's just take some time right now. Right now, let's take some time just to just entertain the presence of the Holy Ghost. Just to be in the presence of the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, lo bosito la mamonda da bandai. Kisho lo ba. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we adore you, oh God. We exalt you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, lo manda la la lo bohosha manda la la. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Isn't it wonderful to come in after a day's work, worked all day long, or you've cleaned your house all day long, or you've dealt with family problems all day long, or you've just dealt with people all day long, whatever, wherever you have found yourself today, and come in and you feel this. You come into the presence of God, to a holy place, where we just step in and God is right here. Where from the first lifted hand in this place tonight, the presence of God in our prayer meeting, <coughs> God was here. And here in this place right now, there is a beautiful presence of the Holy Ghost, a tangible presence of Almighty God in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, to be able to come into a place and feel the presence of God. It's such a relief from the world that we live in. Such a change from the world that we have to endure every day. We're not a we're surely not a part of it. We're just traveling through. And we're not a part of it, but we're here. Strangers, the Bible calls us. Strangers in this land. And we're on our way to a better place. But right now, we're at an oasis of the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we go to prayer tonight, let me bring these needs before you. Anna Hypes, this is Sister Tina's sister is in the hospital doing better and God has surely answered prayer and she is off the ventilator and drinking coffee and so we thank God for that but let's continue to pray for her also let's continue to pray for James uh, Vanest he is um, I'm sure still dealing with COVID and any word hundred and thirty days okay all right, let's pray for James that God would touch him. And also let's pray for, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our assistant uh, superintendent of schools, Rhonda Jellick. Her niece has been admit admitted into the ICU with COVID. And she is 12 years old. And so let's pray for this young girl that God would touch her. And Rick Beverlin, I don't, that's your, your mom's brother, all right, and he's the one that has the blood clot behind the heart. Okay, let's pray for him, that God would touch him. Also, Jeff Monday, uh, who is in need of healing from cancer, uh, that God would touch him, and Sheila Cozart, and other names on the prayer list tonight, Sister Rhodes, Brother Brent, Sister Duncan, let's pray for uh, Sister Deb Jeffers, that God would touch her. Uh, lift up Wendell Fisher in prayer, uh, his surgery coming up. Let's pray for him. Sister Rarden, uh, let's lift her up in prayer. And then there's a lot of names under unspoken, and then other names that's under, especially under salvation. I'm sure there's needs that aren't even on there that you're here tonight. Just lift your hand up, and, and Jesus, Jesus will see that right there. So let's 
Let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray, God, in your precious name. Lord, I'm thankful, God, for what I feel in this place. I'm thankful, God, for what I feel in this place. God, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that, God, you just saturate us with your power <clears throat> and your anointing, God, that, Lord, you saturate this place, blanket us in the Holy Ghost. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Let the glory of the Lord be upon us tonight, oh God. In the house of the Lord, we pray. And God, that you would minister among us uh, tonight. Walk the aisles and the pews of this sanctuary. Let there not be one person in this building untouched by the presence and the hand of Almighty God. Lord, we bring our needs before you. We pray for Anna, God, that you would continue to bring healing to her body. We pray for Rick, God, that by the authority of your word, the power in your name, God, let that blood clot dissolve in the name of Jesus. And Lord, bring healing to his body. I pray, God, for James Vaness, God, that you heal him from COVID. God, that you would heal him from cancer. I pray, Lord, for Rhonda's niece, Lord, that your hand would be upon that child right now. Now, reach down into that into that intensive care unit and God let the angels of the Lord be dispatched and Lord minister to her tonight and bring healing to her body I pray for Jeff Monday God for healing from cancer Lord you're able I know you're able I know you're able Sheila Coastheart I pray God for Sister Duncan and Sister Rhodes Brother Brett I pray God for De Sister Deb and Window and Sister Aaron and lift them up before you every hand that was raised in this sanctuary every unspoken need tonight God there's nothing hidden from you Lord we make our requests known unto you tonight for we need you to move and we need you to answer and we need you to save our families and we need you to save the lost and the backslidden we need you God to give us great revival in this end time Lord God many people we need, God, them to be saved. We pray, God, for them to be saved. Oh, it's your will that all of Jackson County be saved. God, I pray it in the name of Jesus. I pray it in the name of Jesus. I pray tonight, God, you order this service in the Holy Ghost. Direct this service tonight. Lord, let your hand be upon us and let your anointing be upon us. In Jesus' name we pray it. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. I am bringing my needs before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I know that he will reply. I am bringing my needs thank you, Jesus. before the Lord. like to be anointed tonight would you come if you'd like to be anointed and prayed for would you come thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah Jesus would you reach your hands up here towards sister crystal and let's pray in Jesus name God in your precious name Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Lord, we give you praise tonight. We worship you, God. We magnify you, our prayer answering God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Sister Holman, would you take these prayer requests? Pray over them. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Brother Holman. Ushers, why don't you join me up here? You may be seated. Praise God. Brother Brian, ask God's blessing on our worship and giving. Amen. Amen. That sounds good, doesn't it? Give our praise team a hand. My, they sound good tonight. Amen. And it has felt good in here. The presence of the Lord that I felt in this place. The blessing of God. If ever I doubted what I was going to speak on tonight, from the time... Brother Nick got up here to each song that Sister Missy has sung tonight, has confirmed over and over what I have come to bring tonight on this Wednesday night. It's probably not going to be one of my normal running, jumping, cartwheel turning messages, but it's a needed message. I'm not going to ask you to stand for the reading of the Word. Uh, it's 16 verses, and so I know it's Wednesday night. And many of you have worked all day, and you are tired, but you're in the house of God. And uh, so I'm not going to ask you to stand tonight. But I will ask you, if you have your Bible, grab your Bible, and let's take a moment to turn to the 91st Psalm. An absolutely incredible word in the scripture in Psalm 91. Probably one of the most beautiful psalms that were written. And they're all beautiful. But this one simply stands out to me in tremendous, tremendous ways. And so this is where I have felt to go today into the 91st. Psalm. Thank you, Patrick. When you get it, say amen. 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 Psalm 91, starting with one, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place 
Anybody like to hear a secret? You like when somebody tells you a secret. They tell you a secret because they don't want to they don't want to spread it. So so they they tell you the secret because they know you're a secret keeper. Yeah, you, I laughed too when I thought about that. Someone once said, three people can keep a secret if two of them are dead. <laughs> that is truth. <laughs> that is truth. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Thousands shall fall at thy, right, at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Lord, we thank you, God, for what we have felt in this place. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing and the unction of God that, Lord, rests upon this service right now. I feel there is a word, God, for your people tonight, and I pray, God, that your hand be upon me as your servant, that I may speak the word. Let it come forth with clarity. Let it be received in the heart of your people. Let your word, God, be our strength tonight. And I pray, O oh God, that, Lord, you give your angels charge over us and that, God, tonight, Lord, let us leave here encouraged and lifted up, strengthened. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. One more time, let's lift our hands to the Lord and let's praise him one more time. God, we love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. This is a very unique psalm. 
It's a very beautiful psalm, but it's a very unique psalm in that it clearly identifies who this psalm applies to. It clearly identifies that it is not for everyone. This psalm is filled with promise. Now, I understand the messianic undertones of this psalm. I understand there's some prophetic messianic truth that comes out of Psalm 91. But let's also understand there is some truth in Psalm 91 that is for you and me. There's some truth in Psalm 91 that God has designed to give us. And it's a unique psalm because this psalm is not for the casual believer. This psalm is not for the occasional attender. This psalm is not for the part-time Christian. This psalm is not for the one who simply comes to God when there's trouble, that only comes to God and only calls out to the Lord when trouble arrives at their door. And the only time that they find time for God is when there is a moment of desperation in their life. You see, this psalm is clearly for those who dwelleth in the secret place. This psalm is clearly for those who abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This psalm is clearly for those who declare that he is my refuge. He is my fortress. And he is my God. This psalm is not for those who like to play with God and believe that it's a game. This psalm is for those who have committed, dedicated, made up their mind to live for God. This is for those who have clearly decided down deep in their heart with a deep conviction that I will be faithful to God. This psalm belongs to them. This psalm of promise, this psalm of the secret place, this psalm of the shadow of the Almighty. You see, it is for those who live faithful for God, and it is for those who have committed their lives to the Lord and made up their minds that a one-time experience at an altar is not enough. I thank God for my experience when I received the Holy Ghost. I thank God for my experience when I repented of my sins and when my sins are washed away in the name of Jesus. But Elder Pettit, it's not just that moment that I'm thankful for. I'm thankful that every day when I get up that God is with me, that he is my God. I'm thankful that every Every step I take is in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm thankful that God has told me he would never leave me and he would never forsake me. And when God told me that, I said, God, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you because God, I'm in this till the end and God has never left. It's for those who make the presence of God their habitation. It's for those who know and trust God with heart, soul, mind, and strength. But it's also for those, you read on down through Psalm 91, because those who dwell in the secret place and those who abide under the shadow of the Almighty and those who declare that God is a refuge and a fortress and a God that they can trust, you read on down through Psalm 91. 
Psalm 91 and you're going to find that this Psalm is for those who the, the enemy has tried to come after them and laid a snare for them. This Psalm, you read on down, those that are dealing with the pestilence and those that walketh in darkness, those that deal with destruction and those who waste away in noonday. This Psalm, you read on down, are those that evil has tried to befall them and trouble has come their way. That's who this psalm is for. This psalm, this beautiful writing, no one knows exactly who wrote the psalm. Some think Moses. I tend to lean toward David just because I like David. <laughs> and I think David was a great songwriter. And I think David had some times in his life when David understood that he needed a place, a secret place, a place of rest. Anybody ever been surrounded by so much trouble? He said, Lord, Calgon, take me away. You all probably don't even remember, some of you remember that. You young folks probably don't remember that. But there was a commercial on years ago. I think it was it a was it a soap? It was a soap, bath soap, and and uh, they they would show somebody uh, who who would I guess be in the bathtub. I think I don't remember exactly. And then all of a sudden, it's just harps and all that kind of thing. See, we're, we're living in a world of trouble. And God knew that there would be days in our lives. There would be moments, there would be times when we would be filled with trouble. And there would be moments in our lives when we would need a place of security and safety and refuge and a fortress from the enemy. There would be times when the trouble would be so heavy upon us that we would need a place of refuge. He said, there's a secret place. I don't know about you, but I, I often find the Psalms to be very graphic. I, 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 I find them, Sister Robin, when I read the Psalms, my mind is, I'm coming up with pictures. And then and, and when, when I read the 23rd Psalm, I see David on a hillside and strumming that, that harp and, and singing as the sheep are grazing around him. I, I, I just see these things. And, and maybe I've just got a very, so really vivid imagination. But when I think and see the secret place, I see a place of solitude. I see a place of no trouble. I see a place where the presence of God is there. I, I see a holy place that we sung about tonight. We are standing on holy ground. I see a place that trouble can't get in. I see a place where our spirits find peace and rest. I see a place where restoration comes into our minds and in our hearts. A secret place that God has made, a place where the presence of God is, where we can dwell and we can live and we can find that rest for our souls in the presence of God. I come into this sanctuary and I'll tell you, we've all got our places. I know you've got your places. You've got places that you that you go and you've probably got prayer closets and uh, I know I used to know a fella, he, he'd, he'd walk out his back door and walk up on the mountain and there'd be a place up there, be an old stump he'd set on and he'd take his Bible with him and He'd sit there and he'd read his Bible and he would pray and commune with God up on the mountain. And that was his place. It was just a place he could find with God. It was away from everybody and it was away from everything. Well, let me tell you, when I walk through those doors right back there and I walk in here, I find that in this place. I find that when I walk up to the front of this sanctuary and I sit down on the steps of this this altar this platform and I just begin to pray and I begin to commune with God I, sometimes I don't come in here just I don't come in here asking God for anything I say God I just want to spend some time I just want to be in your presence I just want to feel you for a while I 
I'm not here, God, to lay my burdens on an altar. And I'm not here, God, to intervene for anything. God, I just need some rest. I need some peace. I need something, God, renewing in my spirit. God has provided for us, each, each one of us, who choose to dwell in that place who choose to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Those who choose not to be the part-time believers, the halfway ins and the halfway outs, the sometimes I am and the sometimes I'm not. Uh, not for those, but for those who say, God, you are my everything and you are my all. You're my everything, great and small. Oh, God, there's nothing that compares to you in my life. There's nothing like you in my life. God, I've got to have your presence. I've got to have your presence. I've got to have your presence. There's a secret place in the midst of the storm. A peace in the midst of the storm. When we still lived in Charleston several years ago, we decided one day to go car shopping. It was time. We were expecting, or I, were we expecting then, or we were going to be. <laughs> and... So we went, decided to go car shopping. It was a cloudy day, kind of windy day. And we drove over to Patrick Street. If you know anything about Charleston, it's Patrick Street. And we drove over there, and there's a car lot there. And, and while we're there, we're out looking at cars, and nobody comes out. Nobody comes out to us. Oh, one person. I told her, I said, I'm leaving we're not, we're not staying here. Did one, did one guy finally come out? Oh, yeah, he yelled and said, we're not coming out because there was a storm coming. There was a storm. And, and so we got in our car, and being the person I am, I said, I'm never coming back <laughs> because nobody was going to wait on me, so I'm not coming back. And so we get in our car, and as we look up, all of a sudden, he, wa he wasn't kidding there was a storm coming. All of a sudden, we look up, and the huge sign, the, was it Bur Bur Wolf Ford, Burt Wolf Ford sign. All of a sudden, that sign came off and was flying toward us. I mean, toward us. Being smart, I put it in reverse. I backed up. The sign missed us. We, I, said, I said, do you want to go home? <laughs> or you want to keep looking? She said, I want to go home. It was getting bad. I mean, the rain was starting to come down sheets. And we were driving. And uh, if you know anything about Patrick Street, you have to drive under the Patrick Street Bridge to get on the Kanawha Boulevard. And that would, is the road that would take us home. And I was realizing how bad it was because you could see there were trees down on the boulevard. It had already blown trees over. And great time to look for cars. <laughs> I was hoping for a really good deal. And I said, do you want to park under here, under the bridge? Because that would have been, in my thinking, a place of safety. And my wife says, I want to get home. I want to get home. I said, okay. We will get home. So we're driving, changing lanes, going around trees as we drive down the boulevard, turning right onto Pennsylvania Avenue or left onto Pennsylvania Avenue and going up through there, driving up Market Drive and trees still down. I mean, we are going around trees. We're running over limbs, all of that, trying to get to our house and get up there. And you had to go. Our, our house was up on a hill like most houses in Charleston and and you had to go around and come down, and we parked. And, and, and to get to our house, you had to actually walk through somebody else's yard to get to our house. Thankfully, they were nice people and let us do that. 
and, and so we, we walked, it, ran through their yard and got into the house. And there was nothing safer than feeling. Now, we had no electric. There was no electric by the time we got home. Electric lines were down. There was no electric, but there was no better feeling of safety and security than when we walked through the doors of that house. And we walked in that place and shut the door behind us, still hear the wind all around us. We could steer, still hear the storm going and the rain was beating against the windows of the house. But there was no feeling of safety like being in that place in our home where we lived, where we dwelt. And when you've got a relationship with God and you've got a strong, solid, firm foundation and relationship with God. There is no place safer than in the presence of God. And there is no place safer than in the secret place where you can abide with him. When you know that he is protecting you, when you know that God is watching over you, there's peace in the midst of the storm and there's a place of refuge from trouble and there's a habitation that only the children of God can know. Nobody can know this except those who have a relationship with God. Oh, nobody can find this except those who have established a strong relationship with God. I don't, I think about David, and that's one reason I think that this psalm is a psalm of David, because I think about the times that David on the run from Saul. When David was constantly on the run and, and trying to defend himself, he was anointed to be king. He, the, the prophet had anointed him. The oil had ran down from the top of his head, down his face onto his garments when he was just a ruddy little boy. And there was an anointing of a king that was upon his life. But he had crossed Saul, and Saul the king was determined to kill David. And so David, even though he he was anointed. Let me tell you something. You can have trouble and still be anointed. You can have trial and still be anointed. You can go through difficulty and still be anointed. You don't lose your anointing just because you have faced a mountain or a valley. You don't lose your anointing just because you've gone through a struggle. And because everything's not right, you don't lose your anointing. You can still be anointed and go through it. And David, anointed to be king, found himself searching the mountains of Judea, trying to find a place of safety and refuge from Saul, trying to find a place of solitude from Saul, trying to find a secret place deep in the wilderness of the mountains where he could go and feel some sense, sense of protection from the fury of King Saul. Let me tell you something, child of God. We have got places of refuge and we have got secret places and we have got the protection of God about us and covering us. God protects his people. How many times, how many times have we sat in traffic, traffic lined up on the interstate and we've sat there and we have fumed and we have complained and we have we we talked about how slow they're moving and why aren't the cars moving and, and all that until we finally get up to where the accident is and we see the cars all mangled and twisted and we see them there trying to work to save somebody or trying to retrieve the vehicles from the ravine that it went down and all of a sudden we look at one another and we said if we'd have left a few minutes earlier that could have been us. If we had, if we had not been stopped somewhere, if we had not been slowed down, if we had not been been delayed that could have been us laying over there and all of a sudden we realize that yes God's hand has been upon us and God has surely protected us and yes we've been in the secret place every day God's protection is there in every way and we have no concept in the natural realm what may take place in the spiritual realm
We have no place in the natural. We don't understand. I, I guarantee you, my friend, there have been times that the enemy has tried to destroy you and you didn't even realize it. That the enemy has come against you and God has intervened. God has sent angels on your behalf. God has warred for your soul. God has watched over you when you didn't realize what God was doing. There is a God that's watching over us. And there may be the thought here in the mind of David, the protection of God even in the midst of this warfare. Psalm 27 and verse 5 says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in, the pavi in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. I don't know what you're going through tonight. Or maybe I do. Maybe some of you I realize kind of what's happening around you and circumstances that you're dealing with. But I'm telling you tonight, I'm telling you tonight that there's a God who has wrapped himself around you. That there is a God who has, has angels encamped about you. That there is a God who is protecting you. That there is a God who is defending you in the time of trouble. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. He shall set me upon a rock. In the Old Testament days when a battle was going on, a camp was being set up, the tent in the very middle of the, of the troops of the camp was often the, the tent of the commander. He would be at the very center, and outside would be a layer of men and, and guards and armed men and then there would be another layer of tents and another layer going east to west and then another layer and another layer and another layer and another layer going from north to south and, and these tents would surround the commander. These tents would surround him and there to protect him because nobody wanted them to be able to take out the commander because somebody had to give them direction. Somebody had to help them and we need to stay near the commander. We we need to stay close to God. We need to stay close to the middle of the camp. If we want God's protection, if we want God's wings to be over us, if we want God's angels to be encamped around us, then we've got to stay close to God in our relationship with God. But not only that, it's as if at times that God has placed us in the middle of the camp. God has placed us in the middle of the camp. And then the Bible says he gives his angels charge over us. He gives his angels charge. And so surrounding us is an encampment. Surrounding us going to the east and the west. And surrounding us going to the north and the south is the angelic host of heaven. But not only that, God has covered us with his word. So there's a hedge of his word that protects us. And then, uh, not only that, the Bible says his mercy shall follow us. So there's a hedge of mercy that surrounds us. And his goodness shall follow us. So there's a hedge of goodness that God has placed around us. And for the enemy to get to you, it's got to cross the goodness and and the mercy and the word and the blood and the power and the angels of God. I believe tonight there is still an army of God. And I believe there's an army of God in this room right now. I believe there's an army of God that's surrounding this room right now of angels that escorted you when you walked through the doors of this church, that walked and was with you when you got in the car on your way to church tonight. There is a host of angelic angels in this place to be encamped about us daily and nightly. Oh, I wish you could see what happens in the spiritual when the enemy comes in. For while you lay there sleeping, there's an angel that has his sword drawn defending you. There's an angel fighting a demonic force that would want to destroy you. In the day that you and I live, we can feel confident 
and knowing that God is watching over us. That God, that we have made God our refuge and the most high our habitation and our dwelling place. We've got to come to the conclusion that there's greater meaning here and that the most holy place of the tabernacle that is alluded to is not is not that tabernacle in the Old Testament where the high priest went in one time a year and he went in and took the blood of the sacrifice and sprinkled it on the mercy seat for God to accept the sin offering for the people of Israel. And he would wear the bells around on the bottom of his robe. As long as they heard the bells, they knew God had accepted the sacrifice. As long as they heard the bells, because when the bells stopped, if the bells stopped, they knew that God had rejected the sacrifice and that the priest had died. And they would pull him out by a rope because they could not go in to that holy of holy place. Only the high priest could go in there. But we're not talking about that place. We're talking about another holy place. We're talking about a tabernacle. We're talking about we have become the tabernacle of God. We're talking about we have become the resting place, the abiding place of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Ghost. God has filled us with the power of God and his spirit. And the same holiness that dwelled in that holy of holies is the same holiness that dwells in you. It's the same holiness that abides, that abided in, in that chamber is the same holiness that abides in you and the same glory that rested upon the cherubim that was upon the holy of holies is the same glory that rests on the you as the temple of almighty God. What we see and what we look at is David is saying in, a, in the spiritual, he knew that there was no way we was going to go and live in the most holy place. But the, we have been made that holy of holies. And we have been made that tabernacle. And we have been made that place that God resides. We, we have become that place of the Almighty. The secret place right here. The secret place. You've got God with you everywhere you go. You've got God with you when you get up, and you've got God with you when you go to work, and you've got God with you when you come home, and you've got God with you when you're sitting around your house, and you've got God with you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Without the blood, there's no fellowship, and without the blood, there's no dwelling, and without the blood, there's no forgiveness. And we who enter in there, we've come in the name of Jesus, and we have come to God. And God has chosen us to be his dwelling place, the secret place, the abiding place of the Most High God. And God has chosen to protect us. You are, there's not a moment of the day. Why do we get so scared? I don't know. Because there's not a moment of the day that God is not protecting you. Not a moment of the day. God is not watching over you. That God is not taking care of you. I read a story several years ago, shared it with you some time back, but let me share it with you one more time. During the Civil War, a Confederate soldier was placed out in the woods alone. He was there to watch. And suddenly, as he sat there in the wood to be the night watch, he felt something very dreadful upon him. It just came upon him, and fear overshadowed him. He didn't hear anything. He didn't see anything. He just felt something. And at that moment, in those deep woods, it seemed so strange to him. But he decided to sing. 
and he chose to sing a song that said, Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly. Other refuge have I none. And when he sang that chorus, he said all fear left him. Fear just left him. It wasn't but a few months later that the war was over. The war ended. And when the war was over, he was at a meeting. And he sang that same song. And after the song, a stranger came up to him and said, Sir, I've never seen you before, but I've heard your voice. Then he asked him if he sang that song one night in the woods during the war. And that man looked at him and he said, he said, yes, I did. The stranger looked at him and he said, Sir, I was a Union soldier. We were hidden behind the trees. And when, at that moment, we had our guns turned on you. And we were ready to fire. But when you sang that song, when we heard you sing that song, Jesus, lover of my soul, other refuge have I none. He said, I turned to my men. I said, don't shoot that man. And we slipped away, and we left you in the night. I shall never forget your voice from that night. There's only one refuge, and that is Jesus. There's only one refuge, and that is Jesus. And we need him. You need him. You need him to be close. You need him to be your protector. You need him to be your habitation. You need him to be your fortress. You need him to be your God. You need him. Stand with me tonight. You need him. Proverbs 14, 26 says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. There is a relationship with God that produces confidence. Leave that up there for a moment. There's a relationship with God, not just confidence, strong confidence. There's a relationship with God that produces confidence and boldness, but it also produces a joy that leads us to declare, he is my refuge, my fortress. He is my God, and in him will I trust. You can say it, you can declare it, you can declare it in a storm, in a struggle, in a trial, in a test. You can declare, he's my refuge. And he's my fortress. And he's my God. In him will I trust. Because you have found in your relationship with God a secret place. I believe tonight that we still serve a God who is very personal. A God who can be as close as you want him to be. And he's still capable. He can run the universe. And he can watch over you. I still believe... That he's our deliverer, that he's our help, that he's our shelter. And when we're afraid, and the writer's faith in the Almighty God would carry him. If it was David, the writer's faith, or if it was Moses, or if it was somebody else, I don't know. But whoever it was, his words in those 16 verses would carry him through struggle and trial would carry him through everything he was facing. His words, because he said, I will say of the Lord. Folks, sometimes you just got to say it. Oh, I think it all the time, brother. Sometimes you just got to say it. Sometimes the devil needs to hear you say it. 
I will dwell, I will rest, I will find my place in the secret place, and I'll dwell under the abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my God. If you're going through something tonight, if you're going through struggle, if you're stressed to the limit, if you've got too much, too much more than you think you can handle, I've spoken to you tonight. I've presented you a place in your relationship with God that you can find the presence in the presence of God. You can find a rest for your soul. You can find a rest for your spirit. You can find a rest and you can strengthen yourself and you can find a renewing in God in that place of that relationship with God. Why don't you make your way to the front tonight as we come to the end of the service as a church? I will say of the Lord, He is my God. I will say of the Lord, He is my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is my refuge and strength.